Today, I want to share with you a reflection on two paintings by First Nation artist Trevor Nichols. The first painting is titled Family in Blue Holden, which he painted in 1998. And the second, many years later, called Metamorphosis, painted in 2011. And I titled this reflection, Living in Between. As I share with you my respect and my admiration for Trevor Nichols, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. I therefore pay my respect to the elders, past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, the traditions and the culture of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people across the nation. Trevor Nichols was born in 1949 and died in 2012. He was very prominent as a painter in the 1970s and the 1980s, especially with his series of works titled From Dream Time to Machine Time. In 1990, this is how he described his vocation and his mission as a painter. My life revolves around painting and drawing. I incorporate Aboriginal and Western techniques and symbolism to make contemporary art that relates to both cultures today. My paintings are to share with everyone. I look to bridge the gap between Western and Aboriginal art, he says. My work is a balancing act, like walking a tight rope between my dreams and my life when I'm awake, from dream time to machine time. With this painting, Trevor Nichols invites us to reflect on the difficulties and the challenges of living in between two cultures. He does this by combining Western symbols with many traditional Aboriginal elements. And in this way, he creates a unique and often complex iconography with many layers of meaning from the very serious to the very humorous. Let's look at them. At the very bottom of the painting, Trevor Nichols presents us with many of the symbols of urban life. Look at this. There is the F.J. Holden. Then there is a businessman. There is a musician. There is a basker. There is a person sitting down having a drink. Two people fighting each other. There are two people loving each other. And did you notice the little neck Kelly and then the humor of painting a blind kangaroo with a party hat led by a dog. And next to it, there is an indigenous person playing the didgeridoo, then the rainbow serpent, and then the blackbird. On the other side of the road, we have two women, one blonde on the left hand side, they are skating. The other one sitting like in a presidential chair. She is a black woman, an indigenous woman. On the top left hand side, he paints the urban environment. You can see there, there are houses. There is a bank with a dollar sign. There is also a church there, skyscrapers, and a huge chimney spewing out smoke, covering up the sun. But now focus on the picket fence running right across the painting, dividing it into two parts. On this side of the fence, there seems to be the urban life. On the other side of the fence, what do we have? We have a sky that looks more like a Van Gogh sky with the moon and the stars shining brightly. The bright blue night sky is throwing its light over the most sacred of the symbols of the dream time, the red Uluru. Therefore, on one side of the fence, you have the dream time. On this side of the fence, you have the machine time. And Trevor Nichols is asking us the questions. How can these two worlds be bridged? How can one live in between two cultures? To me, Trevor Nichols provides his answer to these questions with the central element of this painting, his blue F.J. Holden. 
This is not only a painting of the Vlava Fair of a young indigenous man for his first car. What is Trevor Nichols saying to me with this painting then? He is telling me that he has learned to combine the two cultures by remaining faithful to his own Aboriginal spirituality. In fact, in the back seat of the car, he has painted a self-portrait and next to him, he has painted his fellow artist and mentor, Robert Thomas. But they are in the back seat. But who is driving? The blue FJ convertible is driven within an urban environment, but by three Dreamtime figures, a family of Angina ancestors. But who has helped him and guided him on this journey of learning to live in between? Is it the owl? Has it taught and linking the two worlds? But certainly it was his mentor, Robert Thomas. Can you see him in the tree on the other side of the fence, of the picket fence, calling him over, reminding him of where he truly belongs? The second painting by Trevor Nichols is Metamorphosis, painted in 2011, eight months before his death. Fittingly and deservedly, this painting won the posthumous Black Prize for Religious and Spiritual Art when it was entered in the competition after his death. This painting is another great example of the way he lived his life in between. Of this painting, Trevor Nichols said, I have included elements that are both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, like the peace doves on each side of the Aboriginal man, which are Christian. These represent me. I'm Aboriginal and also have other ancestry and was brought up Christian. This is how Joanna Mendelssohn describes this painting. The subject is the transition between life and death, between being and unbeing. He is a butterfly. He is a spirit man. He leaves the world of pitched roof houses and, accompanied by angelic flights of birds, goes home to a great nurturing mother. Like Trevor Nichols, as Christians, we are called to live a life in between in so many ways, in between the human and the divine, sharing already now in this life, the very life of the risen Christ, who was fully human and fully divine. As we say at the Eucharist, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And finally, returning home to our God, our nurturing mother who has nurtured us lovingly throughout the journey of our life. And I want to conclude these reflections with the words of Paul Francis that he spoke in Mexico to young people in 2019. The question of death is really a question about life, only a life that is conscious of the fact that this exact instant we land works to make it eternal, he said to them. Then he continued, this gives us confidence to jump into the void and to realize that we'll not fall, that we'll not sink, and that there is always someone there to catch us, both before and after the end. Thank you very much. Bye now.